Hello guys, what is up? It is me, Prince of Otis, back here with another video. What if Luffy had you know his powers? Part 11, Impel Down. And yes, Luffy is going down to that prison, gonna bring out Ace, do all of that, and I will guide you through it as he destroys every motherfucker in his way. And I want to apologize for taking so long to bring this next part out, but honestly speaking, even though this doesn't get as many views as it used to, this shit is just fun. Like, I know no one has ever fully done One Piece, for this long no what if or has and if anyone has then tell me because i'm gonna beat that record because i'm gonna cover everything everything i can at least i'm just gonna go through all of it until luffy becomes the king of the pirates even if i do some time skips there and there but yeah you better get into some real shit and by the way yes luffy will be getting star magic for those of you who have been asking me he will definitely get star magic because it'd be a loss if he didn't and it just wouldn't be as much fun just using wind magic over and over because you know the attacks get pretty boring and you know I want to spice things up, but without any further ado, let's begin. So we stay in flashback from the one that we entered last time as we see Kuma sit by a four-year-old Luffy who would hold his hands out and start to gather wind, almost as if he responded to his will. Isn't it awesome, Luffy would ask? I've never seen anything quite like it, said Kuma. That keeps telling me to keep it a secret though, it's annoying. So you want more freedom? Luffy then nods aggressively as Kuma then asks Luffy if he likes fighting, and Luffy, despite only being four, responds, The feeling of my fist on contact, the pure force and fiercenessness, it just makes me realize how tough it must have been for Dad. Every last thing he taught me was from experience. I don't like it. Then don't do it, but the world isn't fair, Luffy. It finds a way to remind you that you can't escape it, whether you be a man or woman or a child. We all realize that one day, you must fight. Well, that was morbid, said Luffy, as Kuma would then laugh, saying, <laughs> perhaps a bit. Luffy was never born uh, in normal conditions, obviously. When he was born, he never met his mom, but he was raised by the Revolutionary Army. From the mere age of four, he was trained to be strong, not to join the Revolutionaries, but because his father said he could do whatever he wanted. Not right now, but he was trained in hand-to-hand -hand combat by Hack, as well as Dragon, and he also knows how fishmen fight, so he's very confident in beating them. And he also knew Ivankov, who was the reason why Luffy kind of gained a bit of a vanity thing, saying he looked beautiful like a prince despite being uh, Dragon's son, because Dragon don't exactly have the best looks, you know what I'm saying? And he called Kuma, uh, you know, Ivan uh, Kuma and Ivankov and everyone in the army either his aunts or uncles, because they were as close as family to him. But when he learned of Kuma going to the government, when he became, uh, when he came to the island, he became cold. He gained a bit more of a calculated personality until he met Sabo and Ace, who made him want to have friends again. So he also fully realized that uh, Kuma was kind of right in what he said, that he one day would have to fight and get his hands dirty. And he's been doing that on his journey. And now Charlos is the one that he killed. And he was the first person that he fully wanted to just like destroy because he cannot stand the Celestial Dragons. After being raised by revolutionaries, he's seen some things. So, yeah. We return to the present as the Tempest hear Luffy finish and they feel just kind of heavy. They go that far? asked Nami. Of course they would, they're the world government, and now, because of them, Ace is in danger. Bringing out the Viva card Ace gave him, the group then finds that it is way shorter than it was at the beginning, and Frankie would ask, are you taking us with you? Luffy would shake his head, saying, you're not at that level yet. Hearing this, the crew would then feel sick to their stomach to not even be able to be enough to help their captain yet. It's like this constantly through their voyage. They have Luffy bear everything for them, a lot for their sake, including the government itself, and Zoro would then say, fine, go. Luffy would then look at them and see them arise and stand before him as they would then say that they have a request and Nami would lay out a map. I learned of some nice places using your grimoire. Luffy then looks over at these places and realizes something. Wait, you guys, yeah, maybe we should split up for a while, said Chopper. These places are pretty dangerous, you know? You sure you can handle it? If we're gonna be Pirate King, suffice it to say, we need to be able to handle it, said Robin. So we shall, and I don't plan on leaving you alone on these seas, Captain. Yo ho ho. Take care of the thousand Mary for us, okay, said Frankie. And make sure to eat your meals properly. You tend to lose sight of yourself. Next time you meet, I'll be a true warrior of the sea. And I'll be an awesome doctor, so you won't ever have to heal us at all. I don't know how you're going to do it without me, but just make sure to keep uh, all the loot safe, okay? We need to have a big gathering later or something. And I'll refine this sword to its best. That's why you gave it to me, right? Said Zoro. Standing up, Luffy would then hold his hand out, and they all join in with Baldwin forming and flying it to touch. As Luffy would then say, for now, the Tempest will disband. Roger, Captain. With these words, Luffy would then take his crewmates to specific stop, uh, spots they wanted to go so they could train. It partly took uh, some of his powers to take them there because it was such a long distance, but he managed to do it. And this left Luffy all alone on the ship as he would then head to Impel Down. 
and as he spins the wheel, Luffy would then activate a special dock, allowing him to infuse his wind into the ship before he then held onto something tightly, and pressing a button, he causes the ship to be catapulted into the air at intense speeds before then releasing wings, and quickly, Luffy would then form a barrier, grabbing back onto the wheel. Dock X, flying mode, he would say, as the Thousand, uh, thousand Mary would then now flow through the sky, uh, fly through the sky, and Zoro watched as this happened with him being the last person that Luffy dropped off and he would smile. Walking deep into the forest of the area he had landed into, the swordsman would then take out Zephyr and Sandai Kitetsu. Alright, let's get to it. Getting in the stand, he then begins to swing, but as soon as he does, his arm would then twitch and a huge gust of wind releases, pushing back Zoro as he would then crash through many, many trees before then landing ashore. Ugh, what the hell? What happened? Looking at his hand, the hand that was holding the sword, he saw it was bulging, and when he let it go, it went back to normal with him then breathing heavily as he would then slowly stand. So this is the standard Luffy to properly wield it. At this moment, his eyes would then slightly flash as he quickly turns and he becomes shocked as riding towards him would be Mihawk on his little boat. What is that weapon? Said this, asked the swordsman and quickly Zoro would then grab his third sword, putting it at his mouth and then grab Zephyr and Wadoichimonji uh, and his arm once again starts to swell with the sword starting to illuminate mana and the strongest swordsman was perplexed by the weapon. Just my luck, huh? What about my sword? Says Zoro. Hmm. And Anne can still speak up. It must be because we're captain. Maybe. Are you gonna fight or not? Says Zoro. I'm kind of in the middle of something here. Mihawk then looks forward and sees the gigantic part of the island destroyed and becomes shocked, asking once again what that sword was that he is holding. My captain made it for me. Mihawk once again is shocked, thinking, That thing is infused with such power and will despite not being a black blade. Just who is that man? We then cut to black. Luffy is uh, uh, half on his way on his journey to Impel Down, and he will then arrive at Kuja, the Kuja Island. I don't know what it is, like, you know, it's the Amazon Lily, yeah. He arrives at Amazon Lily, and he's so tired that he flew and landed on there, and anchoring the Thousand Mary, he would place a bear around it before then taking a nap in the forest. He didn't even know where he was, he was just really tired, and he just, you know, he just took a little nap. As soon as he took that hearty nap, he soon came to a, a stop, and slowly opened his eyes, but noticed that he wasn't in the same place. As his eyes would then flash red and quickly he would then wake up standing and finding himself on a stage as a stadium full of women would cheer. What the hell he would say as he's even tied up and he would quickly then rip himself free as he would then turn and rotate until he hears a commanding voice. How did you get here? Luffy then turned to see Boa Hancock, the empress of the island, but didn't know her or what was happening. He doesn't really like know anything about her that much. He doesn't really care about this part of the sea. And Luffy then says, oh, I docked and just... Oh, uh, sorry for the trouble, I must have probably surprised you, but I have to leave. Leaping into the air, he would then start to levitate, leaving all the women shocked. He's flying? Can all men do that? Boa would then be shocked as well, but then Luffy goes to fly away, when he would then dodge the whip of a tail and turn to see the two Gorgon sisters. Woohoo! It's them. He's gonna get crushed, and the women be cheering this, wanting to, uh, wanting to see him killed or something, because they're psycho apparently, and they hate everything that has to do with men. And Sonia would then say, so you ate a devil fruit as well? Hell no, I never eat a thing like that. Then how do you explain your flight, you animal, said Megagold. Luffy then pops a vein from this, saying, I'm just a bit more different than normal people. From a side boa, his grimoire, which she had taken, uh, would then float up, surprising her, as she would then grab onto it, only for it to then fly out of her hand to Luffy, knocking her back, and it would open up as it illuminates, uh, illuminates the face of the pirate, and at that moment, all the women felt for Luffy what they felt when they looked at their empress, including the empress herself. Pure lust. And they would be just like saying he looks like amazing, he looks pretty, he looks all of that, but they can't deny, like they have to try to deny that he's not as pretty as the Empress, but like they, they think that all men are savages, but also they're looking at him and they're just like confused, trying to convince themselves that they weren't seeing what was in front of them, they just kept mumbling and mumbling, but Luffy then saying these women are so bizarre, of course I look beautiful, I... Sensing something, he would then descend as Grimar would then land in a satchel, with them then walking to three statues that were on the side of the stadium. What did you do? His voice then becomes very, very raspy and kind of just annoyed, and this stops all their fanboying as Boya will then stand. How dare you try and seduce me? What did you do? said Luffy as he released the Conqueror spirit, and some of the women would instantly pass out as they start foaming at the mouth, leaving the sisters and other warriors shocked. He he can use hockey too? I've only seen big sis use that, thought Marigold, and Boya would then say, he's a conqueror like me. This man has the spirit of a king, and he can actually control it. Luffy then once again asked what the hell she did, releasing even more aura, bringing the sisters to their knees unable to, and unable to even stand. He, Luffy would then say, those statues, they aren't just statues. 
In an instant, he would then disappear and appear right in front of uh, Bo Hancock, who releases the Spirit of the Conqueror as well, causing a storm of lightning to release and clash between the two. The color of the Supreme King as well, she thought? He, he moves so fast, how, how is that man doing such a thing? And Sonia would then say, I didn't even see him move. What kind of power is that if, if it's not a that of a devil's? And Marigold would then say, maybe it has to do with that book of his. At this point, the two would then stop their clash, as Luffy would then ask Boa again what the hell she did, but Boa would then release the Mero Mero Beam at Luffy, with everyone then getting excited as they wanted, wanted to see this man die, because they made him feel a way they didn't want to, and Luffy watches as the beam would then pass through him and soon fade, and he looks confused. Was that supposed to do something? Impossible, said Boa, and Luffy would then say, what the hell was that? Were you trying to hypnotize me? That's not gonna work. As you can tell, I too know how it feels to be called beautiful all the time. And these words were shocked the women as they thought impossible for a man to be so, you know, sought after. But Luffy then seems to be, you know, thought of in the same way that their empress was wherever the hell he came from. And this is when a, a voice would then be heard. Please don't destroy this island. Hancock and Luffy would then look to see the elder Neon, who once again then says, I was not aware of you being here. I'm sorry for being late. So please don't destroy this place. Oh, you're the only person who knows who I am, don't you? Luffy would say. And you only came here now, said the Empress. And Neon would then say, I actually have things to do, unlike you. Just tell me who he is before I make you, said Hancock. And Neon would then say, this is the fifth emperor of the sea with three million berries. All of the warriors' eyes would pop out of their sockets at the mention of this as they could not believe it. And Boa's demeanor would slightly change before then going back to normal. She would then ask, why is an emperor setting foot on my land? I was on a journey to glow nap. I'm not going to destroy this place. I just don't want to see people suffering because of me. You froze them, right? Because they brought me in, I assume. But would then stare at them and before them demanding all the warriors to exit the stadium now. Though visibly confused, they get out while taking out their friends who had lost consciousness. And their friends of the frozen warriors hope that those friends, you know, do survive. And the stadium becomes deserted. Everything becomes quiet, leaving only the whispering of the wind. And Hancock's look of indifference would then break. You, you were the one, the one who killed the Celestial? Huh? Oh yeah, it actually worked, huh, said Luffy. I'd be surprised if I missed. Marigold would then yell from below, Are you insane? The whole world is after you. Let them come then. And these words would freeze the Golden Sisters, as they could not believe he doesn't care about killing a Celestial. And Neon would then say, I told you it was true. The newspaper said that he clearly cut him in half. But what would you do if your friend was about to be bought by that bastard? I only killed him for one extra reason, though. That dragon tried to kill my brother before. He failed, but I understood there was no hope for him, so I took him out for good. I was hoping I got this family too, but I guess you can't have everything. He's talking so casually about this. No wonder he's the Emperor Storm, said Neon. Everywhere he goes, trouble follows, but so does liberation. Hancock would then stand, staying to wait here, and tells Neon to bring him um, to her chambers in a bit. And Luffy would then just land there as the Gorgon sisters would then run past him, and they would follow Boa, with Luffy then asking the Elder what that was about. I don't really have much time, he would say. Neon, however, would then bow, saying, please. Hey, calm down, Elder shouldn't exhaust himself so much. And as he brings the Elder up, she is shocked that he even cares, and he shows a look of actual worry, and she would smile, saying, you're a good man. Well, thank you, but it's common sense. Yes, but not for a conqueror. Would you follow me, please, for the sake of our empress? Luffy would then sigh, saying, sure, but he's bringing the statues, and Neon says to go right ahead. Grabbing the statues, he then follows Neon to the chambers of the empress, where the Gorgon sisters would be waiting, with Boa being behind some drapes. And from the other side, the empress has to come in, and Luffy would then walk, as he would then split up the blinds and seize a naked Boa. Sure, your true nature, emperor, thought the empress. Luffy then slowly walked up, and with every step, this made her heart thump faster and faster until he knelt down and started to reach, and Boa realizes that he's like every other man, only for the pirate to then go grab her clothes that were beside her and cover her up. Man, you're weird. I thought you were an empress. Have some class. Boa is left completely shot as she would then close her eyes in embarrassment, with Luffy then asking if he passed her test. You knew? How stupid do you think I am? With a snap of his fingers, he would then summon his wind to blow the drapes open, allowing the women to look in as Boa would then say that he passed. You really resisted Big Sis's bare body, said Marigold. Again, if anything, I look way better than her, said Luffy. That, that is not true, said Boa. Your blushing face says otherwise. This only makes Boa blush even more, and Luffy would then begin to laugh, and she says to be quiet. And Luffy would then say, this version of you is definitely better. It must be hard, huh? It's as if he's piercing into the depths of my soul, thought Boa. And she slightly avoids his gaze, making Luffy smirk as he would then ask the real reason why he's here. And all the women make eye contact and nod, as Boa would then have her snake slither to her, taking off her clothes. And once again, she would then turn and remove her hair out of the way to show a mark that Luffy recognizes. 
and she would then ask if he does recognize the mark, and Luffy would clench his fist. Oh, too well. His voice had nothing but pure anger behind it, as Boa then turned to face him and wondered just what he had experienced, but Luffy would then calm down. At this moment, is when Bell would then form with Luffy's Amana and she would yawn and wipe her eyes to see a naked Hancock and she would then tilt her head confused. Luffy, have you been doing naughty things? The Empress then quickly puts her clothes back on, seeing of course not as Luffy would then say not to get any ideas and Bell then flies to Boa's snake waving hi to it and the animal bows to say hello because obviously it doesn't have any fucking hands. What is she? asked Sonia and Bell would then turn saying some people call me the vengeful spirit but I'm just a nice little fairy. Call me Bell. She then lands on the snake's head and Elder Neon would then say that uh, she started to hear of her but seeing her for real, she can tell that the rumors about her aren't true at all. Of course, what could this adorable little face ever do, Belle would say. You did send that big guy flying at Saba Odi even though he was just using hockey, Luffy would say. He was being mean though, Belle would yell as she then pouts and Luffy laughs saying that he, she's just me he's just messing around a little bit and to calm down and Boa starts to truly believe Luffy is who he is. He's not trying to hide anything because he has no reason to. He's strong. He can have that choice is there anything i can do to help you asked boa oh really well could you take me down to impel down impel down asked boa and luffy says i'm gonna raid it those idiots took my brother i'm gonna have a little bit of fun and go crazy but that's oh right he's not a man held back by common sense is he thought sonia and luffy would then chuckle as boa would then just kind of help but just smile and we then fade to black Boa does promise to give Luffy a ride to Impel Down, and the next day, uh, he she would uh, go right ahead and just like start right away. And as night fell, though, Luffy would be eating with all the Kuja pirates, including the ones he had saved from being statues, as he and Bell ate with the girls. And the girls would then ask, "Hey, does every man look like you?" Nah, it comes from genetics. If you want to look like this, well, I probably got it from my mom. This is what my dad looks like. He then shows a photo of Dragon and his grandma and the girls agreed that he definitely did not get it from his dad as Marguerite would then say, so uh, how does your win work? Belle would then say, Luffy was born like that so it's not like your Gordon sisters. Then what are you Belle? You said Luffy made you? Some of the girls would say. The two would then shrug their shoulders saying not to think about it and Luffy holds his hand out forming up beautiful flowers from the wind leaving all the girls amazed. It's wonderful, overthinking it kind of ruins the point don't you think? As he smiles, the girls would then begin to swoon as some pass out and others start to get all over him, leaving Luffy, uh, leading Luffy to start running while Marguerite would then follow apologizing. Please understand, it's very rare to see a man here at all, said Marguerite. And Luffy would then say, it's fine, I have great stamina. Oh, I actually never got your name, and Marguerite would then introduce herself and Luffy would then smile. Alright then, let's blow this place, Marguerite. And sweeping her off her feet, he would then blast into the air as the girls would really be disappointed while Marguerite would begin to blush as well as thinking at the fact that seeing the sky from above like the bottom like everything from above was just insane but it was just so weird that she could overlook her entire home she had never seen this view before and she would then say i can't believe we get to look at it all from here all the time yeah it's real amazing oh there's granny neon so they did ascend to the elder and extend their hellos with bell then landing on top of her head i thought you guys didn't get newspapers here oh you're just a pull of knowledge aren't you neon would say i got it from outside i had a little bit of a trip well, yeah, I know almost everything. You can ask me all events and everything that's going on right now. Being interested, Neon would then ask what was going on with the Celestials, and Bell then says they're in disarray at having one of their own killed, and she then brings the grimoire over and shows a newspaper, leaving Neon and Marguerite shocked. Are you, like, connected to that book somehow? And uh, Marguerite would ask, and then says, she was born from it and my mana, so she gets it all. Mana? asked Marguerite. Mana is the power that exists in nature and all people, but mine can be controlled to... Let me control the wind. It's like hockey, but more versatile, as you can see. The fact that such a power can even be controlled. No wonder he's such a wounded man. He must have been causing havoc the day he started. And as she thought this, Neon also looked and saw that on the news, someone was about to be executed with both Luffy and Belle becoming somber when they hear this. That's my brother, said Luffy. What? The two men are shocked and also realize he must have known this this entire time, but he just hated so well. And Neon would then say, and here I was trying to bring you in. For my own selfishness. Nah, it's fine. But what says she'd help, right? Besides, I can't damage my ship. I promise to keep it safe. However, though these words were meant to calm them, it only showed how burdened Luffy seemed to be, carrying on the sole burden to fight against the government and to fight for his brother's life. Watching him somehow bottle all of this up and stay unwavering makes them wonder how he was raised. Meanwhile, in the castle of Amazon Lily, we then find a sickly boa as she rides around in pain in her bed with her body being red and she looked ready to just pop and she would just be sweating intensely as uh, while her worried sisters watch over her, a doctor, after observing her, then said, I don't know what to prescribe her, I've never seen anything like this. But we have to do something, shouts Sonia. She, she refused to even eat. 
At this moment, Elder Dinya would then walk in and says that this is a virus which all the women who have left this island have died by. But Elder Neon survived by leaving and coming back because, well, you know what it is. But Elder, the Elder would then say it is fatal though. What the hell are you saying? You can't be serious. This is completely out of nowhere, said Marigold. I don't know what to tell you. It's just how it goes. But there may be a way to fix this, said the Elder. What is it? Whatever it takes, just make it stop, said Boa. Well, Luffy is outside that door as we speak. As if by instinct, just hearing his name, Boa would then run out of bed, leaving the women shocked until she reaches the doors and opens them to see Luffy and Belle, who turn to see her. A worried, crying Belle would then run to Boa, asking if she was okay, and she would then nod, and she would say, sorry for making you worry. All the women are frozen still and start to realize something, as Miracle would then whisper to Neon, Are you seriously telling us? Yes, that was on purpose. Then the previous empresses died yearning for love? What kind of sense does that make? Boa at this moment is then told of Ace by Luffy and she becomes horrified saying that they need to leave right now. Weren't you sick? Some common cold won't hold me back, said Boa. But that means you'll have to go and go to the gathering of the warlords, said Belle. Correct. How did you- No, regardless, I want to help you, Luffy. A bit embarrassed, Luffy would then scratch his head saying thanks and Boa's heart would then beat faster as she heard this. She would then call over the marines who were waiting for her answer outside the gates of her kingdom and she agrees to go to the meeting and asks about uh, stopping near impel down and it is allowed. And as they go, the Kuja pirates wave goodbye to their empress hoping Luffy will stop what is about to happen and only six days remain until the execution of Porcus the Ace and the Emperor of Storms was on his way. Four days come to pass, and from inside the navy ship he hit on, Luffy looks outside to see the gates of justice opening as fleets upon fleets of marine ship roam just ahead. It's the big moment, said Luffy. Alright, get under my cape, said Boa. As their ship comes to a stop, the pirate empress will then walk out, seemingly alone, as her beauty sends all the men into a frenzy, and she is accompanied by the marine, Momonga, until they reach the entrance. And along the way, people will be saying, like, you know, she looks beautiful and all that, but she tells them to shut it. But this would only make them more obsessed, and when they enter, they meet Hannibal, an underwarden of Impel Down. Welcome to my Impel Down. However, he would then quickly re uh, recorrect himself, saying that uh, he had been getting ahead of himself, and he meets the Marine Mamunga with a handshake. Oh, is that my Emperor? Oh, sorry, got ahead of myself again. The Empress Hancock, I heard of your circumstances, that idiot chief Magellan is at level 4. Vice Chief Jailer Domino here will take you there. He points to the female jailer, who would then salute, saying, Also, you will have to be searched before you go, I uh, Apologize for this inconvenience. It's quite fine. Take the lead, said Boa. And Domino would then turn and walk as Boa then followed her down the hall. And soon they come to pass some cages and prison cells holding criminals until they reached a room. And Boa was told to take off her cape. You will also have to put on these sea store prison cuffs. Boa, as she approached to get the cuffs on, however, would then tell her to be gentle and her beauty would overtake the jailer, allowing Boa to use her marimero to freeze her and anything on her, such as her transponder, to stone. As this happens, Luffy would then fly from under her cape and thank Boa. I'm sorry I can't get you any further. Don't sweat it, since you have made it this far, Hancock. He would then blast down the hall saying, I'll pay you back when we meet again. Hearing her name being called that way just made the Empress's heart flutter, and meanwhile Luffy had just entered the prison, not any level, he had just arrived. Quickly he lands and would be running as he runs past some sales containing criminals who will be staring at him with a look of shock. What the hell is a Yonko doing down here? How did he break in without anyone noticing? Luffy as he ran then looked to his mirror card and kept running forward or whatever it pointed to, but then screams then begin to be heard as he would then see Buggy being chased by three blueberry. As the clown runs away from the creatures, he is then hacked in half by an axe but would stay split using his powers and keep running, when down the line he would then spot Luffy. Ripper? His eyes then explode out, uh, out of his sockets quite literally as he would then run past them and Luffy's hands burst with a red aura and he comes to a stop and this aura would cover his arm with a black armor. It's not Ripper anymore, the name's Straw Hat. The three Bulgaria would then jump at him, two from the side and one coming from the front, and as they slash, he would then cast and break the two axes from the ones coming on the side, and he would then envelop his leg with hockey and break the other axe with a kick. This left everyone shocked to see this, as Luffy then jumps and kicks the other two Bulgaria into the walls, before then releasing a pulse of hockey at the last one. As the enemies are left decimated and out cold, the criminals marvel at his power, and they cannot believe that he just took down three of those things without his wind powers, and down here and it fell down, they're basically unbeatable for you know low level people or just like even if you have powers they're really like they're tenacious to say the least what the hell is with your control of hockey and what are you even doing don't listen to me damn it buggy would say he would then chase down luffy who was honestly trying not to waste time and was ignoring him until buggy then caught up and reassembled himself how the hell are you here i got help from someone Ruggy, as he ran, then pops off his head and looks back, seeing that the Blue Gurry couldn't even get up and was stupefied at how strong Luffy had gotten without needing to use his powers. 
But again, it goes back to normal saying, well, I could use your help, you know? As he uh, says this, another Bulgari then runs at them with Luffy then glaring at it, and it is sent flying by a wave of hockey as it crashes into a wall. Do whatever you want, I'm not slowing down for you. Fine with me as long as I get out of here. Luffy then smiles thinking this is also a good opportunity to free his uncle Ivankov, and they keep running and running, but soon guards are sent out uh, to go after them, so they are chased until they are forced to bust through a wall, and are set toppling down towards the first hell, the Crimson Hell. Luffy then tells the clown to hold on, and as he does, his face is pulled back at the sheer wind resistance. Luffy regenerates, uh, generates as he just blasts down, and over the red spikes he would fly, as he would quickly then get to the hole leading to the second level, and as he does, he would then see some prisoners screaming in agony, but he cannot get distracted and jumps down the hole before then quickly flying down and landing at the bottom. He then gets back to running while Buggy would still cling to him, and Luffy would say, the second level, I heard there are some dangerous beasts in here. They're freaking terrifying, if you meet one, just use your... He then comes to a stop and a gigantic shadow would loom over them, and the two would then turn to see a gigantic beast, a basilic. And I would, uh, as it would screech, however, Luffy would then say, oh, shut it. As it goes to bite them or just eat them, its head would then be separated from its body by a wind axe, which then fades, leaving Buggy relieved, but not shocked because at this point, he ironically believes in Luffy. Hey, you, stop. The guards that were chasing them then finally catch up with some guns in hand, but when they catch up, they get a glimpse of the two, and more specifically Luffy, and freeze, as their eyes then go blank and they fall over. Their mouths begin to foam and they thud to the ground as they twitch, and Luffy then lets down Buggy and they start running away. As they run side by side, Buggy will then stop and actually free some prisoners, and this would include Mr. 3, but Luffy will just simply be running ahead, and as he does, he starts to hear rumbling and turns back to see all the gathered prisoners uh, following Buggy and himself, and he also sees Mr. 3. Oh, it's you. Mr. 3 would then slightly avert his eyes, remembering how they met the first time, which was not exactly the best meeting. And meanwhile, in the command room, panic was already ensuing with Luffy's arrival, and this was just causing chaos. And they quickly alert the chief, um, like the warden, everything. They alert everyone, who then um, gives the news to the admiral, and this also reaches the Shichibukai, who are currently uh, in a meeting. And down on the second floor, as Luffy and everyone run, they come to a stop when they see a gigantic sphinx blocking their way to the next level. Buggy, Mr. 3, and other prisoners are left completely baffled at its size, as they must feel like ants to it. But then the creature would speak in a weird way, as it would mention food ingredients such as somen and ramen. Did they only teach you how to say food ingredients, thought Luffy? Fried noodles. With this weird battle cry, the creature would then roar and raise its paw, and instantly everyone starts running, but Luffy doesn't move an inch, as when the paw almost hits him, it stops, and as he looks up to the beast, they all then stop and turn, as they no longer hear any ruckus. And are wide eyed to see that the terrifying creature was not bowing to Luffy while well, being enjoying, well, you know, being patted. Ah, good boy. I'm so happy that we're, said Luffy. You were testing things out, they all shout. Luffy would then laugh as he names the beast Konohamaru and orders it to stay here and keep the Marines at bay. It begins to wag his tail and nod, with Luffy them saying to follow him, and people will be saying, like, he's amazing. Captain Buggy, why is he even helping you? As they begin to run, Buggy would then say that they have a truce, and this amazes them as they find it amazing that even an emperor respects them enough to let him live. As they move further and further to the third floor, however, Luffy says that they cannot last in there because uh, it is a literal scorching hell, and as much as he doesn't agree with some of their ideologies, he does not want those criminals to already, you know, literally offer themselves to die. At least, stay here and die. I'm joking, <laughs> but you get what I'm trying to say. So they stay on the second floor and start riding while Mr. 3, uh, Buggy, and Luffy enter and every step of the way makes their souls burn and the heat only rises and rises while they sweat like crazy. No wonder this is called the starvation hell, said Mr. 3. Well, you can feel free to stay behind if you want because we're about to be attacked. He would then burst with wind with the ground then beginning to rumble and a horde of beasts is running at them leaving the two men shocked as Luffy would then punch and say, Sylph's breath. A twisting swirly tornado would then form and rip through the creatures as if they were butter, while Luffy would then fly forward and he happens to fly past another warden who will be terrified at what he just saw and he's then hit over the head with a wax mallet made from Mr. 3 and loses consciousness. As he falls over to the floor, the three would then end up running on some stairs when another giant sphinx then shows up and it's about to attack but Bon Clay arrives and destroys it with his white swan fighting style leaving the three surprised, but Luffy does recognize him. As Bon Clay lands, he would then be totally saying, hello straw hat. Long time no see. We've never met before. Oh, right, Bond would say as he would then shout being surprisingly shocked, which is kind of stupid, but it's on purpose. Bond is funny like that. And he would then ask Luffy if he was willing to assist him. There's someone on the fifth floor I wish to meet and help, if possible. Are you stupid or something, Buggy would say. And Luffy would then say, oh yeah, sure. What is wrong with you? Shouts Buggy. Wait, you'll really help me? Asked Bond, even after we were enemies? Well, it's not like you ever beat me. Also, you're pretty funny, says Luffy. Thank you so much, Straw Hat. 
Luffy just has no problem and runs past him as Bond and everyone follow, but Luffy thinks that he is definitely someone that has changed a bit because he's not doing fine. Uh, he's doing fine without being under Crocodile's control. I mean, Crocodile's a horrible captain. So, yeah, he's crossing. He has his fingers crossed right now. On their way, Luffy would then keep destroying beast after beast. Meanwhile, on the fourth floor, Magellan gathers his people, such as Sadie and Hannibal, as well as a bunch of other guards and people and enforcers, and they'll be waiting at the passage connecting the third and fourth level as they wait for Luffy. Magellan then asks, what's the situation? Sir, Straw had his bulldozing through our forces and heading straight for us. Figures, he'd say. I'd be happy for him to just sink into some, into some seawater and lose his powers, but seriously, all that power from a fucking book. He would then rise, saying that he'd go meet the Emperor. I heard he could be quite level-headed compared to other pirates. Maybe we can come to a conclusion. You really think he'll listen? Asked Sadie. As she was slightly chuckled, Magellan would then say no, but after all of this, he must be tired, meaning his hockey levels are low. I have a 50% chance if things go south, then maybe I might be able to escape. Fortify the gate. Yes, sir, they would all say, and a few minutes pass, and Luffy would indeed start to feel the fatigue from being in the heat so long, but he pushes on, still not wanting to use too much mana, and while his levels of mana are high, fatigue is fatigue, and it will not leave until he heals himself or, like, you know, eats something, but he wants to save as much of it as possible. Haki can be basically, like, something he expends, because, well, it's still very useful, but it doesn't, like, drain everything out of him now like he used to. And by the way, Straw Hat, are you good? Of course I am, just run. Amazed by the determination in his eyes, Bond would then wonder who he's trying to get to, when Magellan then lands from above and crashes to the ground, and as they look up, he would then say, Emperor Straw Hat, we need to talk. Buggy, Mr. Three, and Bond get ready to fight, and as he breathes heavily, Luffy would then ask what he wants. I was right, he thought. I simply wanted us to have a truce. Why is there even a need to do this? Can I know why you're here? Who are you after? <laughs> are you talking to me because you think I'm weakened? You're not? asked Magellan. I always have enough strength when it comes down to people close to me. He then starts to emanate a red aura and Magellan would realize what is about to happen and he would burst with poison and create a hydra but as the attack reaches, Luffy would then explode with the conqueror spirit and blow everything away including the warden who would then lose consciousness along the ground would then splatter his poison and he is not out cold. At that moment when the warden fell just from Luffy's overwhelming will, it's as if the heat itself calmed down for a moment but there was nothing but just quiet and Luffy then cracked the silence by summoning his wind arc which then forms around him, Mr. Three, Buggy, and Bond Clay. Incredible, Straw has said Bond. Yeah, don't mention it. Let's go. They then move forward as Luffy doesn't even consider Miguel an enemy, much less a threat, but as they ride on, Luffy would then ask what drives um, Bond so far. Who are you risking your life for, asked Luffy. I'm looking for the majestic Eva. He was imprisoned down here, but he's a miracle worker. Even all the queens of the world look up to him. Hearing this, Luffy would then be surprised. He begins to laugh. Luffy the three confused, but Luffy then says that's not a bad goal. Then why the hell are you here, Straw Hat, since you want to ask questions, said Buggy. I'm here for my brother. You have a brother? They all say. Luffy would then not say that he's about to be executed, and they all realize who he's talking about. He's talking about Ace. Firefist Ace and you are related? Asked Mr. Three. We're brothers. That's all you need to know. That's enough for me. I will be willing to accompany you, said Bond. As he raises his arms and, you know, spins in the arc, Buggy would then tell him to shut up because he's not in their little crew, and as they argue, they reach the gate, with Luffy then blowing it down, and they meet the remaining army men to fight them. This includes Sadie with her tame hell beast as well, of course, and they would, uh, they would then say to fire because, like, you know, he's an emperor, and Hannibal would then say to fire everything because this man will kill us. Riding their cannons, they then shoot, but Luffy jumps off the arc as do the others with the ship then fading away, while Luffy then cuts through the cannons with a barrage of wind daggers that rain down and start killing their enemies as well. The beasts then charge and at this point, they are met by a combined attack from Mr. Three, who creates candle boots for Bond, who then struck the giraffe-looking uh, beast and sent it flying. As the giraffe is sent flying, it lets go of its mallet, which Buggy then catches and swings in a complete circular motion before then letting it go towards Hannibal, who using his halberd will then slice it apart, leaving the pirate shocked. In that instant, Sadie would then attack with incredible speed at Bond and Buggy, but as she strikes with her pitchfork, Luffy then appears right in front of her, taking a strike to the chest that will be covered with mana skin, and this shatters the weapon, leaving her shot because, uh, well, I mean, shit. To them, like, mana is not exactly how it's perceived to Luffy. Sometimes it's like it's not even there, especially when he's using it only for mana skin, so technically she just saw him shatter it with his skin only. And then she is slapped and sent cratering into a cannon, and an explosion would occur from this. Meanwhile, Hannibal's hands and uh, his halberd become covered with hockey as he then blitzes and Luffy would then meet his weapon with a hockey filled punch, causing a spark of lightning as they would then blow back uh, the warden who would then spew blood Luffy then says, let's go. They nod and as they do, Buggy would then pick up an axe for protection and on the way they beat marines and guards and uh, with this they head on and head on and reach the fifth level, the frozen hell. 
As they stand in the snow after having just arrived, the three would then instantly turn to icicles and they begin to shake all over. Who the hell makes these places? Luffy would say. Jeez, let's just go. Closing his eyes, Luffy would then focus his hockey and slowly wrap it around Buggy and everyone, including himself, and they are then less surprised because they can no longer feel the, the cold at all. And at this moment, Luffy would then begin to fall when he's caught by Bond. Luffy, he would say, I'm okay, I'm okay. I just need to concentrate, so I'm leaving all this to you for now, okay? Seeing how much trust Luffy had been putting in them, even left Buggy filled with a warm heart, but he quickly then burst it off. How can he just do that? He doesn't even know what he'll do, what we'll do, thought Mr. Three. Bond would then say, don't worry, just put your life in my hands. Luffy then puts a thumbs up and instantly Bond would then run as do the others, as to not lose their uh, hockey coat, uh, and they would then uh, just follow and I will end this part here. Tell me what you thought down in the comments below. I would like to apologize for my audio changing. I recorded this like, I recorded most of this like last night, literally at 10 o'clock. And then I recorded the rest like around uh, 1 o'clock. So my voice changed a bit because I literally woke up just then. But I hope you guys enjoyed this part. Uh, I'm going crazy. I told you I'm going to I'm gonna cover everything, bro. Everything. I'm going to cover everything. But uh, yeah, um, this, the crew has split up. I made a pretty big change in the story, especially with that whole giving Zoro a op sword or what will be an op sword later and uh i hope you guys like that change i hope y'all really uh like the way i'm taking this the direction i'm taking this in don't forget to like and subscribe hit the notification box to stay up to date on all of my videos and future ones that will be coming and i will see you guys in the next one stay safe peace i'm gone